let's take what we've learned and put it all together. Um, I'm hoping that you've followed along with me because the all this really takes is a lot of muscle memory. You right click, left click, and start to use the tools. And as you get along, then you'll kind of just kind of take off on this and you won't need any more digitizing classes. Today, I want to talk about some more tools though. We, we touched briefly on the reshape tool. So as you're digitizing, I wanted to show you that you don't have to be uh, perfect while you're digitizing. So let's just come in here. And now I usually like to get up close, but you know, when you're kind of sitting far away, you won't hit things like you want to hit things. And let's hit the T and then the H. And you'll see that I kind of missed the mark, but that's okay because you can come in here and quickly just get your reshape tool and fix things. So I don't want you to feel the need to be perfect just as, you know, so when you're doing this, you're like, man, I didn't get this right because I was deleting like crazy. I'm like, man, that's not right. And then uh, I just realized like, hey, man, you know, I went in here and I started using this reshape tool and I realized I don't have to be perfect and I can digitize a little bit faster. I mean, you know, I don't know why you would want to be super fast with this, but sometimes you just want to kind of get projects done. There's another thing I wanted to bring your uh, attention to as well here. So hit, hit the T key, hit H, and then you notice here, I can just click here and add a note if I want to. And now we're cooking with Crisco. Now, the another thing that I wanted to bring uh, to your attention is your stitch angles. Um, as you're digitizing and you're doing this, I want you to realize that every node you place is a stitch angle. So I'm just going to come over here. And when you come down here, if you don't click right across and you do this, and then maybe you do this here, right? And then you kind of go wonky with your stitch angles here or with your, if you notice here, you see your lines are kind of going funnier. Let's press the T key there and you can see that your angles on your stitches are kind of wonky. So as you click, keep in mind that you're creating stitch angles, but I don't want you to worry about it because as you press H there, you can come in here and you can fix all of that in the end as well. So now all is not lost. If you have wonky stitch angles, don't worry about it. You can come in here and you can straighten things out. But a lot of times, you know, sometimes you're not going to want to do any editing and you just want to kind of get what you want to get done out of the way. But you can come in here and straighten everything out, get your stitch angles done. And now, voila, we look good. So keep in mind your stitch angles. Now, the last thing that I want to bring to your attention before we get on with the, uh, the class here is I want to show you that you have pathing. So right now you can see that we have one trim, right? So let's remove an object here. Hit your O. Let's remove an object here and let's remove this object. Now you can see that you have zero trims. That means that, uh, you know, when your machine cuts your thread, it's a trim. You want to have minimal trims and you want the machine just to keep chugging along because less things can go wrong if you're in production with less trims. Plus you just want to be more efficient, right? So as you're digitizing now, because you got that muscle memory, you're not really worried about what you're doing for as that, as that goes, and you're not worried about being perfect. You want to think about your order of operations, right? If you've ever been in a machine shop, let's hit H, you want to think about where, what's going to go where and when we're going to do it, right? So how is this going to be looking when you embroider it? And now you can see this little green handle here is your start and this little red handle here is your finish. It's where it's going to end, right? So now you know, say, hey, I'm going to go from here. I'm going to start. Maybe I want to start down here. If this is a cap, we'll talk about caps later. I want to start at the center and at the bottom of the cap and work my way up. That's fine. And then I want to end right here because I know that this letter, this part of the letter is coming up next. So now I'm going to start right here. I'm going to kind of come across here. I'm going to press enter. Now, hit your H key again. We'll hit your object key, then hit H. And you see that it started right here. 
If you look, you have just your one trim. I'm going to end right here. See how that changed to a two? So you go back, that's how you know that you have, now it's back to a one, now you know that that's going to be the next thing when this thing stitches out, right? So now, if we come over here, now in a normal world, what you would do is just duplicate this right here, and then you would mirror this, okay? And then scooch it over, and this would be the end of that. Now you see how you have another trim there, right? So keep in mind what you're doing. Hit your H key and look for your your start and your end. So the start is right there and the end is here. It's kind of backwards. So let's start this over here. And now you should move your trims. Let's see where this ended. There we go. Now your trims are back to one now. So now you know this is going to go first, this is going to second, this is going to last, and it's going to end right here. And if you wanted to hop to this E, you could drop a little stitch here if you wanted to, because now this is starting to, you're, you're starting to pay attention to what you're doing. This is only one millimeter, so it's not going to show up. It's going to bury inside the, the threads there. I hit your H key. That's the start and the end. And now you know, because it's going to apply the closest trim, when you come to do your B, it's going to connect right up. So we're going to start our B here. But before we do that, I just wanted to let you look at your, your pathing. So I want you to start paying attention, less attention to like being perfect now, and start to think out how you're going to digitize what you're digitizing. Now we can get into the, uh, the, the lesson here. Now I wanted to show you here is that success leaves clues and remember this is people had to digitize these letters and the machine does a pretty good uh, job of it so you can see how things are digitized so if you're ever worried about like man i don't know how how to start this or where to go let's come over here and take a look how this b is done to here and then we're going to right click and then we're going to come all the way around these are all right clicks. So we're gonna right click. And then these are you can do a straight click if you want here. So you can do a right click and then you can do a left click. Do another left click here. Left click here. Then we're gonna go all the way to this corner. Left click. We're gonna come down. We're gonna go in this corner here. Straight click. Then we're gonna right click. Right click. Uh, we'll do another right click here. A right click, and then we'll do two left clicks. And that's a done deal. Now you can hit your H key, and you can make some changes if you want to make changes. Okay. And you don't really have to be perfect, but for me, sometimes I just, you know, I'll look at the letter itself and go, man, I want this letter to look different than the way it's looking. And that's kind of how I make a judgment on whether or not I want to go in and make changes because I might just not like how that B is looking, right? So I see some little areas down here that need to be addressed. And this is what's cool. You can just go in your reshape tool so while you're digitizing, you don't have to worry about being perfect. Now, I hope that you are doing this and working along with me because the muscle memory and now what you're starting to learn is really important on getting this done. Let's grab this C real quick. And now, like I said, I'm not going to, these are right clicks. These are right clicks now. I'm not going to do the entire alphabet. I will show you that I did finish. Um, and I have some homework for you to do. Okay. And I want you to do exactly what I did. I have the file available for download here. These are all right clicks because we're going in a, in a circle, aren't we? Uh, I have the file available for you to download so you can follow and you can see my clicks. And so I want you to look at the file itself and then also go inside and look how things are digitized and I want you to do the entire alphabet. Now, if you want extra credit, you can do what I did here finish the entire alphabet and I also want you to do 
the lowercase letters. And the lowercase letters are pretty cool because as you go along with the lowercase letters, you'll start to, to realize that a lot of these are the same shapes. So you can take the B, you can just right click on something to duplicate it here, then right click again, and you're gonna mirror it, and you'll mirror it on the X, and now you have a D, right? You can also bring it down here. Look, I picked the wrong letter there, but anyway, so you get the point, right? Excuse me. So you get the point. So you can change these letters around, and you can have some of the same letters, like I took this here, and I duplicated it. I just right-clicked, and I drug it over here, and I had the top of that, right? So you can do that. And also, uh, as you start to click around, you'll start to realize that this here are the N, excuse me, the N and the M look the same. So you can right click on that and then you can drag it right over here, which is what I did. And now you have your, your N. So for your homework, you should complete these. These are all really easy to do and I think you should do both. And I guarantee you, when you finish with these here, the next thing you'll be asking me is, what's next, Sonny? Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed these lessons. The next thing we're gonna be coming up with is how to do cursive. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.